Wade Francis. Hey, how's everybody doing? Anybody having a birthday here tonight? Yeah, I love celebrating my birthday. I call my mom up every year and say, hey mom, thanks for getting laid. <laughs> and the first time I told her that, she said, well, it was my pleasure. <laughs> She's pretty funny. She's a little odd sometimes though. My dad passed away recently and uh, at the funeral, she leaned into me. Thought it was gonna be something sweet and sentimental. She said, you know, I always knew you were going to be a comedian because sex with your father that night was a joke. <laughs> well, we got an election coming up. Anybody know who they're going to vote for? <laughs> I don't. I just think, you know, if you vote for somebody, they should be passionate about the same things you're passionate about. So far, nobody has come out and demanded that we put midgets in the military. <laughs> I think it would be a great idea. I mean, from a cost-efficient standpoint, it makes perfect sense. You can clothe, feed, and house twice as many for the same price. Beach landings would be great, you know? Just think, you wouldn't have to use those boats. You could just shoot them out of those cannons, you know? Thum, thum. I get them with parachutes. I'm not cruel. Uh, I don't know. You could fit two in a bunk. Or if you let gays in there, too. I don't know, have the people from Mardi Gras design their costumes for them, you know, instead of uniforms. Give them those big 20 foot costumes with the giant heads. Probably when they come over to Horizon out there in the desert, these little third world guys, be firing away at the heads. Won't be able to do anything to them. The midget will be fine down there in the crotch, just working in the You know, they'll be screaming. They are invincible giants. Our weapons are useless. <laughs> and they'll just keep them. They get close. They can pull down the floor and shoot them with a 22. <laughs> they have shot Ahmed with their penis. What new devilry is this from the great Satan? <laughs> kind of terrorize the terrorists. I don't think it'd be a good idea. Uh, I don't know. Thinking about giving up comedy because I was going to start writing some things. Uh, you know, when you got kids, you start thinking about kids, you know, and how important they are, and wanted to do something nice for them, you know. I wrote a children's book, you know, I hope you all read it. It's, uh, it's one of those educational things to teach children about, you know, different things. This one teaches them about religion. It's called Good Touch, Bad Touch, A Child's Guide to Catholicism. <laughs> I have a friend with a special needs child to be politically correct. And I thought, you know, it's a shame. They don't do anything for them. There should be a market for them. You know, but you go to the greeting card section, nothing. So I made one up for them. On the front it says, to my special daughter on her special day. You know, it shows a little short bus with the kids in the hockey helmets, a couple of them licking the glass. <laughs> And uh, then you open it up on the inside, and you see the long buses plummeting into a fiery chasm. <laughs> and the writing in the inside says, Just remember, sweetheart, all the kids on the long buses are going straight to hell. And it just gives them hope. <laughs> mm. You know how mean kids can be on the school bus, right? I mean, everybody rode the school bus at some point. You got to wonder. Do the kids on the short bus do the same thing? Pick on each other? You know? You got a big forehead. Your legs don't work. I just wondered about that. I have to ride one one day and find out. Yeah. Thought about doing some other stuff for kids, too. Like Sesame Street. Figured I'd update the theme song for them. You know, make it more modern and hip so to have more of a modern appeal. They rejected it. I, I don't know why. I mean, here, this is what I sent them. You tell me what's wrong with this. I like hanging out with Big Bird, Ernie, and the Grouch. Sesame Street's in the motherfucking house. Uh, I guess that blasting out in somebody's living room with their five-year-old sitting there with his fudge sickle probably wouldn't be a good idea. Uh, yeah. I was uh, flipping channels the other night and came across this extreme sports show but it was on the religious network, which I thought was kind of odd, <laughs> you know, mixing religion and the sports. 
I mean, if Lance Armstrong were a Mormon, you know, because, <laughs> you know, Mormons ride bicycles and Lance Armstrong won the, it's like a big bicycle. <laughs> anyway, it's weird though. I thought, well, if they can mix, you know, religion into sports, the way these boxers, every time they win a fight, they go, well, I just want to thank my personal savior, Jesus, for giving me the strength to beat that non-believer into a coma. What is this guy doing in between rounds? What would Jesus do? He'd use the uppercut. But um, I thought, well, if they can do that, why not mix, you know, sports and religion? It just seems fair. You know, take out the choir, put in cheerleaders. We got spirit. Yes, we do. Holy Spirit, how about you? Here we go, Buddha. Here we go. I don't know. I can see the play-by-play -play now. Oh, there's an offsides call there. Uh, Father Timmy's been flagged for illegal contact. <laughs> Looks like he'll be spending 15 years in the purgatory penalty box. He could hurt the Cardinals' chances this year. Well, my name's Wade Branson. You guys have a good night.